has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. It's Pharrell on the bench, coast to coast, in the biggest way possible, hanging out the bad seat, the broken, the bad apple, with a bad attitude, hanging around a bunch of bad, out of bad, take bad, lot, bad, do bad, 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 attitude, bad vibes. We are live in the Magic City studios in the Barola Palacio, right across the river to the woods from where Granny loves her lemon hybrid. And I'm not talking about what goes in iced tea in New York City, the Big Apple, ooh. People dressed in plastic bags, directing traffic, some kind of fashion, shake it up, should do better. I'm up in the come rump, like a flat to party up. Rats on the west side, the bubbles of town, with a mess of tats and tatter, but splattered all over Manhattan. It's only rock and roll, but a lucky, lucky, yes I do, but a lucky, hey, what's gigging? I'm Pharrell, along with your boy Carver High this afternoon. Aaron O running it with Mafia, Hayden Fry at LTN in Kansas City. Mo kicking it in. We look at the birthday roll call on a thirsty Thursday. We got afternoon day ball. Uh, you heard the prime minister give you everything. Marlins up three nothing in the sixth over the Phillies. Guards three zip on the Tigers in the sixth. White Sox now one nothing to the Royals. Bottom three Astros three nothing. Top three over the Rangers getting ready later this hour. Bucks, D-backs, and uh, just in a few minutes, Cards, Rockies. There's just all kinds of activity today. We got it all for you. We'll break down all the games, give you winners. Talk about all of the games last night. Albert Pujols with number 687. The Bucks beat the D-backs 6-4. Greg Allen with a big RBI double. Phillies beat the Violence 4-3. JT Rail Muto with the go-ahead hit of the eighth. Schwarber love and life in the city of brotherly love. We'll hear from him. Guards beat the Tigers 3-2. Royals over the White Sox 8-3. MJ Melendez brothers with a home run. Rangers beat the Strauss 8-4 and 10. Leonid Tavares, a three-run double in the 10th was the difference. We got the lion's share plus scoop. Mesh, you have got to be kidding me. Craig Mesh from Fantasy Sports Today and NewsWire on Sports Grid will join us. And listen to this later uh, in the show. I mean, you might as well ring it up. Look who's coming on. Andres Cantor, the god of soccer. You have got to be kidding me. Plus, we've got Andy Baskin, I believe, coming in from Cleveland. Uh, With all the problems with Deshaun Watson and how the Guardians are playing, we thought we'd hook up with our boy Baskin. Uh, The Mariners beat the Yankees yesterday 4-3. Made me want to hurl. Carlos Santana with a two-run shot. Judge hit number 45. Yankees and yes, working uh, with awkwardness on the Paul O'Neill day. He's only allowed to like stand in the middle of the field with his family and not touch anyone because he's not vaccinated. The whole thing's ridiculous. Dodgers beat the Twins 8-5. Joey Gallo sighting. Ernest and Julio Gallo, your boy, with a home run last night. He's loving L.A. I think that's a dig at New York because it doesn't smell like urine, vomit, and garbage in L.A. It just smells like gunfire. It's a little different. Braves beat the Red Sox 8-4. I gave you an Azuna shout-out yesterday, Carver. I hit a three-run shot. Braves call up one of their top prospects. He has a home run, Vaughn Grissom. Padres beat the Giants 13-7. What a game. Brandon Drury with a home run. Mets beat the Reds yesterday afternoon 10-2. We got it all for you, all the baseball, you name it. And we're going to get into AL MVP odds, NL MVP odds, Cy Young's both leagues odds to win the World Series, tonight's games. Baltimore, Boston, look at the field of dreams. They're playing in the corn tonight in Iowa. Cubs and Reds, what a thrill for everyone. I'll tell you, I'm going to watch the captain final episode at 10. I don't care about that stupid corn fed game. I'll tell you, I'm just a jerk, actually. I can be a jerk. Today in Carver High History will solve all those problems, though, make me happy again. KD, we're talking about him now, allegedly wants to go to Philadelphia. Brooklyn wanted Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum in a deal for Durant. <laughs> like that would happen. We got all of our radio affiliates, Sirius XM Channel 159. Of course, Sports Map Radio Network, Sports Byline, 
and Mighty or 1090 ESPN Radio in San Diego. Near to you, I'll be on there uh, on 1090 next Tuesday, I believe, doing a shot at around 10 to 2 Eastern, whatever that is, Western. It's almost 11 o'clock West, uh, 10.50 a.m. in the West Coast. I'll be on with Scott Kaplan and the crew on 1090. Great show, great guys. Love those dudes. Uh, Brown's now considering trading for Jimmy G because they know what's about to happen to Watson. He's going to play a preseason game Friday night, and then he's going to lose a year. Tom Brady leaving the Bucks camp for personal matters. Carver High and I are going to figure out what those personal matters are today on the show. We're going to try to figure that out. Todd Bowles giving Brady the hall pass. I wonder if that's what it is, that Giselle's finally had it, and she's going to let Tom grift. Anyway, NFL preseason games tonight. Pain day, 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 pain day. G man, 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 big blue against the Pats, just like the old days. Brian Dable talking about the game, plus Ravens, Titans tonight. The Ravens have won 7,000 preseason games in a row. Lamar Jackson going to help call more plays for the Ravens this year. Whatever. Uh, we got Ron Rivera talking about Carson Wentz today, Pete Carroll on the show, Tua on the show, Matty Ice on the show, Arthur Smith on the show, odds to win the AFC, odds to win the NFC. We got lawsuits out in Pullman. I mean, we got it all today. Grab a cold one. It's time for Coast to Coast, baby. If you or a loved one has mesothelioma or been diagnosed with another asbestos-related cancer, call now. An estimated $30 billion in court-ordered trusts have been set aside to pay out claims to asbestos victims. You may be able to receive compensation without ever going to court or filing a lawsuit. Thousands of hardworking men and women have been diagnosed with mesothelioma because manufacturers put profits ahead of safety. Manufacturers knew the risks of asbestos exposure for years, but knowingly manufactured and sold deadly asbestos-containing materials, putting millions of American workers at risk. These manufacturers have tried to avoid compensating their victims, but the courts have ordered them to set aside an estimated $30 billion in trust money for the victims of asbestos. Call now to see if you're entitled to a portion of the $30 billion. You could receive compensation without filing a lawsuit or going to court. For your free legal consultation, call 800-268-1371. That's 800-268-1371. I'm a non-attorney spokesperson. With Life Alert, one touch of a button can get you help fast. I've fallen and I can't get up. Don't worry, help is on the way. With any of Life Alert's three emergency systems, help can be summoned immediately, and batteries never need charging. I was having a stroke, and I was scared to death. If it weren't for Life Alert, I wouldn't be sitting here today. Life Alert is a lifesaver. My husband is alive because of Life Alert. Life Alert is the lifesaver to keep me out of assisted living. Life Alert saves a life every 11 minutes. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-609-5506. That's 1-800-609-5506. Call now, 1-800-609-5506. This is a paid advertisement for legal services. Attention. From 1953 to 1987, veterans and civilians were potentially exposed to toxic chemicals in the drinking water at Camp Lejeune. Exposure to these chemicals increases the risk for cancer and other health problems. If you or a loved one were diagnosed with a serious illness after being exposed to contaminated water at Camp Lejeune, you may be entitled to compensation. Call Sokolov Law now at 1-800-327-4629. That's 1-800-327-4629. Attention, do you owe more than $10,000 to the IRS? If so, you may qualify for the IRS Fresh Start Program, so you won't have to make any payments to the IRS. That's right, if you qualify for the IRS's Fresh Start Program, you won't make any IRS payments once you are accepted. Once you are in the IRS Fresh Start Program, they must stop all harassing and threatening collection activities. Call Tax Relief today now at 800-382-1870 to see if you qualify. Again, 800-382-1870. 
buck. There's no better feeling than a win, except a bad MGM win. Goodbye. That one hurt good. You feel that? Yeah! Now you're winning with the king of sports books. Come on. disappointing Carver High that I did not go through actually the birthday roll call at all due to a failure of communication between my mind and my mouth. Uh, it's your boy Hulk Hogan's birthday today. What you gonna do when the holster comes creeping up on you? Craig Elo, our boy out in Spokane. Robert Gathers, Melky Cabrera, Pablo Sandoval, the Panda Bear. Are you kidding me? Patty Mills. And Kevin Knox, birthdays today. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. <laughs> All right, Carver High, day ball going on. By the way, if you get the BetMGM app, you can bet $10 on any game, win $200. If either team hits a home run, use the bonus code MLB Home Run 2022. What do you got, Carver High? Any adjustments to these afternoon day games today? Uh, not too many adjustments right now. The Marlins have the 3 nothing lead over the Phillies. That is in the bottom of the seventh uh, as the Phillies just can't get anything going uh, offensively today. The Tigers have gotten on the board against the Guards. Now 3-1 there in Detroit. They're in the top of the seventh. The Royals have a one nothing lead over the White Sox, man. The White Sox suck. They, they can't beat the Royals ever. I mean, uh, 3 nothing. A- Astros lead the Rangers in the bottom of the third as they got a three-run homer from your boy, Candy Maldonado. Uh, and scoreless, they are actually, we're going to start with this one because they are just about to throw the first pitch, Scotty. Uh, so before we look at last night in Denver, let's try to, uh, if anybody wants to get a ticket in quickly here, uh, between the Rockies and the Cardinals, of course, Marquez going for them tonight. Uh, Cardinals won last night, the rubber match this afternoon. They're just about to get underway. Who do you like today, Scotty? I mean, I'm on the Cardinals right here in this game. Immediately, boom, they're starting right now. They are starting right now, and uh, they are underway. Last night, Scotty, something of note, uh, in the Cardinals' 9-5 to win over the Rockies. And when a guy hits his 687th home run, well, they get a little juice uh, on coast-to-coast the next day. Albert Pulo, Scotty, on Valley Sports Midwest last night. Albert hits it out to deep left. It's at the wall. Pools in a game in which he is tied. Ty Cobb in games played is back at the ballpark in which he had his first ever major league hit. Decades later, he's going deep. Albert Pools, 687 career homers. All right, Carver High. Uh, he wants to hit 700 home runs, and he's got till what the fifth of October to do it I, I don't think he hits 13 home runs uh yeah he's not getting 13 home runs in the next month and a half uh there's no way if he wants to get 700 homers he's coming back next year uh that's that's the only way that he's getting 700 homers I, I don't see it I mean what's he got this year I, he's probably got that for the whole season right where's he in the in the 10 to 12 range probably for the whole year he's not getting the 700 homers <laughs> Maybe he'll do that thing where he'll come back and he'll just play like he'll play till he gets to seven. Like maybe he'll only play April and May next year. Once he gets to 700, they'll have the goodbye press conference and he'll go off into the sunset. Maybe they'll do one of those, Scotty. Who knows? You lose his right. No 700. Uh, Also, also getting going in about a half an hour out in the desert. The Buckos will be looking for the split of the four games against the Diamondbacks. Uh, Mer- Merrill Kelly going for the D-backs today. Ice-cold JT Brubaker on the mound 
for the Pirates, minus 174 for the D-backs, total of 7.5. I've got a couple of these guys in the lion's share coming up as well, Scotty, since it's a limited night schedule. We were going to squeeze in the 345 game on the lion's share today. <laughs> uh, I don't like Cole Brew at all. I'm on Kelly and the D-backs to win this game, and it's real close on the total, keeping it under. Uh, that's the goal, but... When Brubaker pitches, anything's possible. he give up 10. Uh, last night, the Buccos did get off the deck out in Arizona. Greg Allen, Scotty, the RBI double on AT&T Sportsnet Pittsburgh, getting it done, the former Yankee. And that's hit hard to right center field. Varsho back toward the wall. He can't make this catch. Greg Allen is rewarded finally with a double to finally a run. it's four to two very exciting what a thrill for everyone. finally uh what a thrill indeed uh we mentioned that the marlins have a three nothing lead on the phillies down in philadelphia last night phillies did beat them four three they beat alcantara scotty who was pitching great uh, and then the Phillies finally broke through. Schwarber had an RBI double, then he tied it. And then JT Realmuto put him ahead for good in the eighth on NBC Sports Philadelphia. And a live drive, base hit into left field. The Phillies have taken the lead. RBI single by JT. Look at the emotion from Schwarber. Phillies lead it four to three. Yeah, I hit that bet. I stayed on the Phillies even though they were up against Alcantara, I think. Uh, the Phillies are on fire right now. They have won seven in a row. They are going for eight despite being down 3 nothing right now to the Fish. Kyle Schwarber last night after the game, Scotty, loving the atmosphere in Philly. Always good when you're winning in Philadelphia. They get behind you. Uh, here he is afterwards on NBC Sports Philadelphia. That's the only time they get behind yeah, you. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a heck of a win and a uh, heck of an energy in here. I mean, it's... It, 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 Kind of a little playoff atmosphere right there, right? Uh, got a really good pitcher on the mound. Uh, he's going out there, going to work, and uh, we just keep fighting throughout that whole game, and uh, we're able to scratch out the win. We know the other side of their fandom in Philadelphia, that's for sure. I mean, honestly, they have been dealing with, uh, well, at least they got the Eagles the Super Bowl, I mean, with Foles, <laughs> honestly, because uh, they have been abusing those teams there, the Sixers and the Phillies, and well, at least the Phillies, what, they got it done in 08? And then uh, they did. and then it's dried up. They lost to the Yankees in 09, then you get the Eagles Super Bowl. The Flyers yeah. haven't won since 75, the Sixers, Sixers. 83. It's embarrassing. I, I actually saw it today on... Uh, TV uh, proclamations that the Sixers were going to win the NBA championship once they well, get Kevin Durant, that they're going to win it all with their MVP, uh, on, JoJo Embiid, that doesn't win the MVP. But on, but I don't know if that's going to happen because all the Sixer fans, Scotty, apparently don't want to part uh, with Maxi. Uh, they'd be very upset if they traded Maxi for Kevin Durant. Are you uh, kidding me? That would upset me? people. Like, like that's that's. I'd trade wrong. his mother uh, too. Tyrese Maxey, good young player. It's Kevin Durant. Uh, let's relax a little bit. How stupid uh, are they? There. Honestly. <laughs> it's amazing. The Guardians beat the Tigers 3-2 uh, to two last night. And while the Guardians were winning, Scotty, the White Sox were once again losing. Uh, as MJ Melendez, who? Uh, he's been on fire for the Royals, and he has been making the White Sox lives a living hell. Here's another homer for Melendez on Bally Sports Kansas City. Oh, MJ Melendez off the lefty. Deep right field, and the Royals retake the lead. I don't make Slugger feel good, but Melendez even better. Man, this kid, he just, he, he shocks you. It's, it's shocking to see how he can do that. I mean, it's just so embarrassing. That it's and, just every other day. They couldn't win two in a row if it hit him in the face. They cannot. And with that win yesterday, the guards now in first in the AL Central because the Twins lost last night out in Los Angeles. The White Sox, two and a half back. Hi, 
Hi, folks. Medicare Part C plans with extra benefits like getting money added back to your Social Security check may now be available to you in your zip code. Make sure you're not missing out. It's simple. One, call the number on your screen. Two, they'll look up your zip code and see if you're eligible. Three, they'll check for plans with extra benefits like prescriptions, dental coverage, and the benefit that adds money back to your Social Security check every single month. Call now. I call to get everything I deserve. I call to check my zip code for a plan with a benefit that adds money back to my Social Security check. I call to check my zip code. Millions of people have called the Medicare Coverage Helpline. Call. Check your zip code, see if you're eligible, and get what you deserve. Call now. Call 1-800-810-7576. That's 1-800-810-7576 now. Non-attorney spokesperson. This is a paid advertisement for legal services sponsored by Nightline Legal. Cases assigned on a random basis to participating law firms. Attention parents. If your child was born premature and later diagnosed with necrotizing enterocolitis, also known as NEC, call right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. Certain types of baby formulas have been linked to an increased risk of newborns developing NEC, a severe and potentially fatal intestinal illness that oftentimes requires surgery. If your child was born premature or at a low birth weight and later diagnosed with necrotizing enterocolitis, the baby formula your child was fed may be to blame, and you may be entitled to significant compensation from the manufacturer. Call right now to find out if you qualify. Don't be a victim. Get the help you deserve. There are time deadlines to file a claim, so don't wait. Call right now. Call 1-800-958-5083. That's 1-800-958-5083. You heard a screech outside at night, but you can't see what it is because there's not enough light. You need the Bionic Floodlight from Bell & Howell, the solar-powered, motion-activated, multi-directional floodlight, the versatile wireless, safety, security, and outdoor lifestyle light you'll love. And right now, it's yours for just $29.99. And the shipping is free. Order now, and we'll send a second Bionic Floodlight. Just pay a separate fee. Here's how to order. Call 1-800-604-7066 or order online at bionicfloodlight.com. Go deep with BetMGM, the best place to bet on every MLB game all season long. Live betting from the first pitch to the final out. Money lines, run lines, totals, however you like to play, BetMGM brings the heat. Boost your payoffs with Parlay Boost and cash in on every punch out and big fly. The best place to bet baseball is BetMGM. Now you're betting with the king of sports books. Sign up today and your first bet is risk-free up to $1,000 with bonus code home run. The brighter the lights, the bigger the stakes. Hunt or be hunted. Know your prey. This is a whole new jungle. This is The Lion's Share. Brought to you by Bet MGM. All right, Carver High, lion's share time. Let's make him some money. I know we did it again last night. Alvarez, ding, ding. Uh, yes, we did ring the bell with Jordan Alvarez last night for the Astros, so we got back in the win column with the Taters. Uh, Verlander got over the strikeouts. Helen Keller stayed under for you. We had two of the game props hit, including the big one with the Red Sox and the Braves both scoring four or more runs last night. Uh, that was a nice, I think, plus 230 hit. So we had ourselves uh, a good night with the lion's share brought to you by BetMGM. And we will continue uh, here now. Now, there's only two night games, Scotty, of course, because they have the cornfield game tonight going on along with the Sox and the Orioles. So we had to slide in. A little late afternoon lion share uh, here today because the Buckos and the D-backs start in about 20 minutes. That's enough time for us to get some plays in. We will start uh, with Merrill Lynch Kelly here going for the D-backs against the Buckos. Five and a half is the total for him. Plus 105 to the over, minus 150 to the under. After a really good stretch, he's been under three of his last five starts, Scotty. I like the over for Merrill this afternoon. Yeah, I mean, he's facing the Pirates, for Christ's sakes. The guy's got 10 wins. If he can't strike out six guys, there's something wrong uh, with the Earth's axis. I'm with you on the over. And in the same game, 
We got to go a little ice cold brew, Baker. But which way are we going to go? Five and a half is the number for JT. Minus 105 to the over, minus 140 to the under. It's like we say, Brubaker gets beat around, Scotty, but over five and a half in five of his last seven starts. I think he can get over again today against the D-backs. Yeah, the D-backs are just as bad as the Pirates. Why not? <laughs> get the brew on ice here. Let's go for ice cold brew, Baker. And could be a little uh, getaway day. Get everybody out of town. Swings and misses. Looking at strike threes. Both guys going over uh, in the late afternoon game out in the desert. Next, tonight, Orioles and the Red Sox. How about the Dean? Dean Kramer on the mound at Fenway for the Orioles tonight, Scotty. Three and a half is the number for him. Minus 155 to the over, plus a buck ten to the under been pretty split in his last six starts has some pretty good numbers has some low ones i'm willing to go under tonight because i think we're going to get a softball type game at fenway between these two yeah i'm going under i, I have no idea who this person is <laughs> i just well like, listen not, we got we, i'm not we have i don't a believe in him we have at a that thin place. roster tonight we have a thin roster for the pitchers tonight for the k props there's only two games we had to slide Brew Baker in there for the well, afternoon. I like the bet. I like the call. <laughs> I just don't know enough of him to worry about it. But I say on the road at Femway, he doesn't get it done. And I will also admit for our last guy, we'll go to the cornfield game here. Nick Lodolo from the Reds. Now, when I was looking at these this morning, I went seven and a half. For Nick Lodolo, what's going on here? So I did dig a little deeper, Scotty. He actually has... Some pretty big strikeout performs. He only has nine starts this year. He's gotten over seven and a half in three of them, but he's got some nines, a 10. He's been stuck at seven in a bunch of others that have gone under, but it is the cornfield game. It's plus 110 to the over, minus 155 to the under. I'm going under. I think we'll see runs in the cornfield. Yeah, I'm under. Last year in this game, and I don't care who's playing, they hit eight home runs in the game. I mean, it was like a little league field. I, you know, everyone wants to talk about the movie and Kevin Costner oh, forget and that. Burt Lancaster and all this other stuff. That ballpark is like a wiffle ball field. So there are not going to be any eight strikeouts. There are going to be, you know, more likely eight home runs like last year. And I love your tater uh, tots tonight because uh, the bottom line is, I think you're dead right on a couple of them, especially that Votto. And I hate to unseal the bag, but the first person I thought of, I didn't even look at your list, and I thought Votto. Because Votto's, like, very emotional about playing in the game. It, like, means something to him. He's like a real purist uh, with his, you know, love of the game. So I think he's going to yep. hit one. Uh, I think that he's going to hit one as well. We will get to him. Let's start uh, with one guy in the Pirate game. I'm going to O'Neill. He had the night off last night. I want a cruise missile today. Now, this was 550 earlier this morning, Scotty. It's now gone to 450. So we got in a good number early in the morning at plus 550 for your boy O'Neill. How about a cruise missile this afternoon while we're doing coast to coast? Well, I mean, you know I want uh, a cruise missile. You know I want him to hit one. Uh, but I don't think he's going to hit one today. I hope no he does. No cruise missile today. I hope he does as well. Next, we will go to Ryan Mountcastle of the Orioles. He has been on fire at a homer the other night against the Jays. He's beaten up the Sox this year as well, Scotty. Has a bunch of home runs against them. Plus 310 for Ryan Mountcastle tonight. You're not going to give me a uh, Rugi today? You're not going to give me a little Rugi? Uh, Rugi, we can't go to Rugi too often. I know we had a big homer for the Orioles the other night. We can't go to Rugi again. He's not going to. All get right, it. I'll give you Mountcastle then. Why not? We'll go with Mountcastle. All right, let's get to the cornfield uh, for the rest of the Taters uh, tonight on the Lion's Share. Patrick Wisdom with the Cubbies. Uh, we'll go with him plus 320 to go deep into the cornfield for the Cubs. I, I think Wisdom's going to hit one, and, uh, you know, Ian Happ's going to hit one, too. I wouldn't be surprised uh, if Ferris hit, hits one either. You said it. A lot of home runs there last year. We got a couple of bad teams out in Iowa. Uh, let's see if we can get it again. And you let the cat out of the bag. Joey Votto has been very emotional about the game. Plus 340 for Votto tonight, Scotty. Are we buying? 
I'm all over Votto to hit the home run. I won't be surprised if he hits two. Two for Votto tonight, maybe. How about that? Getting involved for two home runs. There you go. Uh, tater time tonight uh, on the lion's share during the cornfield game out in Iowa. We've got game props as well, Scotty. Pirates and the Diamondbacks are about to get underway. Pirates to split the series, getting the win today, and I like them to also go under 7.5. Big price, plus 400. Pirates in the under today with Brew Baker and Merrill Kelly. Let's go, Scotty. Get on board. You're on, Cole Brew. I'm not. I got Kelly and the D-back, so I can't ride that. Can't ride it. Ah, oh, come on. Uh, next, we said the homers. How about the Cubs and the Reds? Both to score four or more runs in the cornfield tonight at plus 160. I like it. I, I think they're both going to score more than four runs. I think it's going to be another, you know, wild wiffle ball game. A wild wiffle ball game in the cornfield. And finally tonight, also, I thought a softball uh, game up at Fenway between the Red Sox and the Orioles. But I'm going a little step up on this one, Scotty. Four wasn't enough for me. How about both teams to score five or more runs tonight in the Red Sox and the Orioles at plus 260? That's the big bomb of the night. So they both score five. Yeah. Both it's... score five. Yeah. I, Come no, on. I'm not, I, I'm, not, I'm not feeling it. I, I just don't Come have any on. faith. I, I like uh, <laughs> the Orioles. I don't like the Red Sox on that end of it. Don't like the Red Sox side. Orioles, of course, have been playing very well right in the mix uh, for – the wild card. I want to give you one more because I just saw this. Uh, the, the guy Aquino plays right field for the Reds, Scotty. He's in the lineup tonight. Plus 375 to hit a home run. Smiley is starting, of course, uh, for the Cubbies. Aquino, four for nine with three home runs against Smiley. That's a bonus ball for the Lions ding, share taters ding. tonight. <laughs> four for nine. With three home one, home runs, our boy Aquino at plus 375 to homer for the Reds. Put it on the pile, Scotty. <laughs> I like it. I, I'm all in. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, that is tonight's action. Uh, limited games, but that doesn't mean uh, that we are not going to try to get some tickets. Cleveland now up 3-1 on Detroit. I was throwing this at you when we went to break before, and since we have a minute, I'll bring it back up. Cleveland now in first, Scotty. In the AL Central, uh, a game over the Twins, two and a half over the White Sox, who are once again losing to the Royals. So if these scores hold, they can actually push to three and a, three and a half ahead of the White Sox by the end of the day. The guards, Scotty, with a little separation from Chicago, maybe. They've already won seven of ten, and, you know, I always kind of feel like it's, uh, you know, with the Twins losing three in a row, and... They've lost six of ten. Uh, at some point, it's like the you know the IndyCar NASCAR theory. They you, know, you pass them, and then it's bye bye. You're not going to see me again. I'm going to win this race. I think they passed them. I think uh, the guards are on their way. And you and I have been on the guards talking about we're cheering for them the rest of the way. We're sick and tired of waiting on the White Sox to take off. It's never happened. And I'm just not interested in the Minnesota Twins being in the postseason based on their futility there. They've lost 15 straight playoff games. Enough already. Uh, I'm with you. Also, Marlins still lead the Phillies 3-0 in the bottom of the eighth. But the Phillies, Scotty, have two on and one out in the bottom of the eighth right now with Alec Boehm up. So the Phillies with an opportunity here, Scotty, to maybe get on the board and try to push that seven-game win streak to eight. I mean, I, I'm not going to be surprised at all, are you, if they uh, come back the way they've been playing lately? And uh, uh, they have a one-game lead over that third wildcard team, the Padres, who have a one-game lead over the fourth team, Chasing, which is the Brewers. The Lion's Share, presented by BetMGM. 
Have you ever felt leg pain, restlessness, cramps, tingling, swelling, numbness, itchiness, or coldness? Then you need the new clinically proven Legsercise Pro, the natural circulation booster that uses continuous automatic leg movement to soothe pain and promote healthy circulation the natural drug-free way. After using Legsercise for a week, I felt like I wanted to go for a walk again without pain like I used to. Legsercise Pro's patented walking simulator propulsion technology moves your feet back and forth along its concave track, creating constant movement and flex at both the knee and ankle joints. It's like having a physical therapist right in your own home. It's helped with the swelling and the pain. The tingling feeling is gone. Call right now and order your very own Legsercise Pro, the clinically proven automatic leg mover that soothes pain and naturally promotes healthy circulation. Call now. I lost my motivation. I was feeling old and starting to look it. And then, voila. I feel better than I did in my 20s. If you feel stuck and you can't find the drive, it may be due to low HGH, which naturally drops with age. Your growth hormone levels start declining in your 20s, but GF9's lab-tested, patented formula is designed to boost GH levels naturally by up to 682%. Growth hormone is associated with reduced body fat, increased lean muscle, improved energy, mood, and more. And best of all, GF9 has been shown to work in as little as two hours. I've taken a million different supplements. This is the first first one that I've noticed has made a tremendous difference. To me, GF9 is the best supplement out on the market. GF9 is a top-selling male performance product at GNC. Call right now to try GF9 for 60 days absolutely risk-free. Call 1-800-795-9129 or go to getgf9.com. Join us. Get your drive back. Get your youth back. And get back in the game with GF9. If you or a loved one has mesothelioma or any other asbestos-related cancer, call now. Asbestos manufacturers sold deadly asbestos materials to thousands of companies, putting workers at risk. An estimated $30 billion in court-ordered trusts have been set aside to pay out claims to asbestos victims. You may be entitled to a portion of these funds and receive compensation without filing a lawsuit or ever going to court. For your free legal consultation, call 800-268-1371. That's 800-268-1371. I'm a non-attorney spokesperson. This is a paid advertisement for legal services. Attention. From 1953 to 1987, veterans and civilians were potentially exposed to toxic chemicals in the drinking water at Camp Lejeune. Exposure to these chemicals increases the risk for cancer and other health problems. If you or a loved one were diagnosed with a serious illness after being exposed to contaminated water at Camp Lejeune, you may be entitled to compensation. Call Sokolov Law now at 1-800-327-4629. That's 1-800-327-4629. We usually go to uh, Miami for a lot of our sports on this show. We've got the mayor of Miami, Joe Ranieri. Today we got Andres Cantor, the legendary soccer play-by-play voice. And of course, where would we be without our weekly dose of Scoop Mish? Craig Mish, of course, from Fantasy Sports Today and Newswire on Sports Grid joins us to talk baseball. All right. Uh, Craig, uh, the Marlins today, given the Phillies the business in uh, the bottom of the eighth, still two on, two outs, but they're holding on three nothing. And then uh, what do you think of this? And then last night they beat Alcantara. Yeah, good, good, good to be back with you, Scott. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, Sandy had, he gave up, Sandy gave up six hits, Scott, in the eighth inning. And he's the first player in Major League Baseball to give up six hits in the eighth inning or ninth inning in 21 years. I mean, that that's stunning to see. And, and just basically because he went into the inning last night with only about 70 pitches and Don Mattingly really didn't get anybody up until he gave up his fourth hit in the inning. But uh, let's be honest, Scott, the Marlins are not playing well. They They're not scoring a lot of runs. Their pitching is very good. But they've already dropped the first two games in this series. So, you know, usually teams will win one out of three. And Miami is at least in line as of right now to win this game today. So, you know, I was watching the uh, the captain and, uh, you know, 
and, and you know there were flashes of Mattingly in there, and you know the the playoffs that he finally made it to. And I don't know if I've talked to you about this before, but you know I'm fascinated by Mattingly. You know, mm-hmm. not so much as a manager. I I respect him. I mean, I don't think he's done anything incredible as a manager, but as a player. Uh, he just blew my mind, and I just couldn't believe that he really played in all those years when the Yankees kind of stunk. Uh, yeah. They never did anything when he when he played in pinstripes. What uh, do you remember most about watching that guy play baseball? Because uh, he was special. Yeah, a couple of things. First, before we go further, tonight, Scott, is the final episode of right. The Captain. Uh, it is episode seven tonight. And you may know somebody in it tonight if you watch it. I'm not sure. Not 100%, but you may want to check There's it out. scoop on there? At 10 o'clock tonight. 10 o'clock Eastern tonight. It'll be, it's a lot You're of it is everywhere, Scoop. The, a lot of it is about the Marlins tonight. So hopefully you'll, you'll tune in tonight for that. Very excited to, to see how that ends up coming out. As far as Don Mattingly is concerned, I, I do have a pretty good relationship with him through the years. So this is a good question for me. Obviously, his term as a manager with Miami, he did win manager of the year in 2020. He had a pretty stacked roster in L.A. and did not win a World Series there. But as a player, you're talking about somebody that I grew up on. And and Scott, growing up in South Florida in the 80s and then in the early 90s, we did not have a Major League Baseball team. But the Yankees did train in Fort Lauderdale. So that was more or less one of the teams that I got a chance to know pretty well. And then watching the Braves on television and watching the Cubs on television every day, those were the two others. But Donnie was an amazing player. He was, you know, pros pro, as they would say. He's still, to me, you know, one of the nicest people in the game. And, you know, I think this could be his last year managing, not just Miami, but for good. So I'm definitely going to soak up the last month and a half of, of him being around here. Why do you think that is? He's getting older. I, I, I talked to him, Scott, and, and I had a piece in it, uh, you know, in, in one of the local columns here about it. You know, he's got, Scott, I don't know if you know this, but, you know, he's got older kids. And then he got remarried, I think probably want to say about 10 years ago, maybe. And right. he has a young son. And, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I still think he wants to be around the game in some way. Um, and I'm not sure how that will end up being. And look, maybe he will continue on as the Marlins manager. And I don't know what I'm talking about, but. He's not 50 anymore, you know, and, you know, managers like him these days are very rare to have an older manager in Major League Baseball. And I think he sort of acknowledges that. And then on top of it, he's been with Miami for a long time at this point. He's the longest tenured manager in the division. And there there just comes a time where he I think he has to make the decision as to what he wants to do. And, And again, I'm just speculating, but I would lean if I had to guess toward this being his last year. I think it is. So do you think that uh, they would be stupid to let him, uh, obviously he'll do whatever he wants, but do you think they should do everything within their grasp to make that not happen? Like keep him as their manager or does it not matter? I mean, you you, you know, I don't know that most people feel that way. I I think that he, he did have that one great season in 2020. They did not fully equip him with a team to make the postseason this year. They had a couple of signings that did not work out, at least on paper thus far. They have not. And and I and I still think in the end, Donnie appreciates I, I Donnie has come around on all the analytics and the home runs for sure. No question. I mean, look, in the past he had Giancarlo Stanton and Marcelo Zuna, right? Like he had those guys right. on his team. But this year, more than ever, he's endured a season where a lot of the players on his team just strike out a lot and don't get on base and don't <laughs> advance runners. And Miami right now is on a streak of 10 or 11, I think it's 11 straight games of scoring three runs or less, which is a franchise record for them. And and he's a hitter by nature, Scott. It's very hard for him to watch. The pitching has been very good for Miami, but their hitting has just been so brutal. And <laughs> and how many years can he go through this? They were, they were The hitting was rough last year too. So it's not that Miami should latch on to him. I'd love to see him stay in the organization, but it just may be time for them to have a new voice leading this team. I think it has to be acknowledged. So in 97, when Jim Leland got it done down there, and I'm a big Jim Leland uh, fan from his days in Pittsburgh, and also 
I used to live on the same uh, block as Jim Leland. He lived right mm-hmm. behind my house. And I drove up this lane in Pittsburgh every day as a kid, uh, going to uh, school and, and such and doing whatever. And, and on that same block was a, a, a legendary sportscaster in Pittsburgh, John Steigerwald. So he would be reporting on Jim Leland. And I was just a kid and a fan of Jim Leland's. And I went to every pirate game. I went to 81 games a year. I went to every game. I had season tickets. And that was my life going to baseball games. So when he won down there in 87, I was so happy for him. Like Mm -hmm. beyond any, uh, no one cared about the Marlins. Okay. But I did because Jim Leland was their manager. And then in 03, when I was down there working at QAM, they somehow, God blessed me with that season. I have a picture right. over my shoulder of me with the World Series trophy partying at Mikasuki with the team. And I you know, went to every game. I had the Pharrell Avidian section in left field. Yeah. There was no one at Marlins games. There was not even 3,000 people at the game. But I had a section of 500 drunks and homeless people and drug addicts that came every night because I gave them free tickets. Which World Series? I mean, they beat the Yankees, for Christ's sakes. Yeah. It had to be 03 that was better. Then watching my boy Leland win it in 97, which was better for you? You know, Cangelosi was on that 97 team too. Don't yeah. Uh, yeah, 03 was better for a lot of reasons. 03 was a Cinderella story. They were not expected to do anything. They had an under 500 record in May. They fired their manager. They brought in a new one, Jack McKeon. This guy's like, yeah, like on the verge of retirement and then all of a sudden they go on this run they call up this guy Miguel Cabrera he's now Hall of Famer they call Dontre Willis he wins rookie of the year there, there was just so much magical about that season it takes nothing away from 97 but Scott 97 was a bought team they went out and they got Bobby Bonilla and they got Moises Alou and they got Kevin Brown and they got all these like best Gary Sheffield they got all the best players in the game to right. go out and win a World Series and and then they tore it down after but 03, because it was so unexpected, and you're right, those games throughout the summer, there were no, there was nobody there. Finally, when Willis came up, he became like the must watch. And you could, and again, the tickets were hard to come by at that point. But that was like late August and September of that season. Right. So for me, 03, without a doubt, was the better of the two. Well, how about how, because I can't wait to watch the captain tonight and see Scoop in there. I love the series. Uh, I like the Yankees, you know, so it is what it is. But I have to tell you that um, hearing Jeter talk about that that 03 haunts him, that they beat the Yankees, makes him sick to his stomach. It, it literally, he's like, we should have never lost to the Marlins. But the Marlins beat their ass, and they did close. it in New York in game six. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, Beckett, Pavano, all these guys – I mean, Willis, Miggy, it was insane. And and to see that it graded on Jeter, I actually kind of got off on that a little bit because I love Jeter and I love the Yankees. But to hear him admit how bad it sucked losing to the Marlins, uh, that made my day. I got a picture to prove it. Like, I was so hammered with that trophy over my head, if I could only tell you. (laughs) Yeah, 03 was was bad for, for them, but 04, I think, was worse. I mean, they were up 3-0 on Boston in the ALCS. Yeah, that was way worse. <laughs> that was probably worse. <laughs> and 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 in, in the end, he becomes the CEO of the Marlins. I think that's more of the focus tonight, to be honest with you. I think there's a lot of that involved. Well, like, I got to ask you about that. Because when he left and, and basically said, all right, thanks, I'm out of here, uh, what has happened since then upstairs in the front office? I don't think anybody knows on the outside except you who are in the uh, franchise inside circles and uh, a reporter that they all know and trust and give stories to. They like you. Tell us what's happened to the franchise since he walked out on them. Well, I mean, he really didn't walk out on the Marlins. It was a very mutual, at best, parting of the ways there. So I think that's one misconception. I'm not sure how much of that will be discussed tonight. 
So I, I you know, this was this was by no means a a seventy thirty, you know, Jeter wanting to leave and the Marlins saying no. I mean, this is at really? best a fifty fifty, and I would say maybe even leaning toward the other way too. But I mean, people know that it's true. But 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 since but since he has uh, been gone, they essentially have handed over a lot of the day to day and the power to their general manager Kim Eng who right. Derek hired in 2020 at the end of the 2020 season, despite the Marlins making the postseason there. And it seems like there was like a pretty big fork in the road at that point, because a lot of the focus at the time, Scott was on Kim being the first woman to be a general manager, first Asian American woman to be in a general manager. who was a phenomenal hire for the world. But at the time that it happened, the Marlins were on this run here of making the postseason and then beating the Cubs in the postseason. And then they hired somebody who had never been a general manager. So it's it's it doesn't feel like a start over, but it does feel like they took a step back at that point. And now they're finally starting to get on the track where they were in 2020. At least that's the way that I view it. She has a, a, a stellar reputation at high levels of baseball. Uh, to get that gig, I respect her. Do the players think highly of her? Respectfully, I got 20 seconds. Yeah, I mean, look, it, it's hard. I, I think she needs more time to do the job. I think that's the easiest way that I could say it. The problem is, Scott, fans are very frustrated. It's been five years of no winning. Will she be given that opportunity remains to be seen. Wow. Well, that would suck. I mean, they got to give her a chance to do her thing. Uh, and I know she knows how to do it, obviously. So... I think she deserves a better fate. I hope baseball Donnie doesn't walk either. Great stuff, Scoop. I'll watch you tonight, my man. All right, see you later. Funerals can be emotionally devastating for a family to go through. Besides the sorrow, loved ones are left with the high cost of arranging a funeral. Funeral Advantage was formed to help protect your family when they need it most. It pays your loved ones up to $20,000 immediately for funeral and any other expenses. It's a good feeling to know that my family will be taken care of if anything happens to me. Funerals can easily cost $9,000 or more, but government benefits pay only $255, leaving your loved ones to pay the rest. It's so easy, just answer a few simple health questions. This is so affordable, even for someone like me who's on a fixed income. If you're 40 to 85, get information on how to protect your family. Funeral Advantage is something we all need. There's no risk or obligation. Call now. Get the facts about how easy it is to protect your family. Call 800-565-6178. That's 800-565-6178. Are you over 50? Would you like to get up to 33% more income in retirement? Then call now for this free book, Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers, from a leading financial firm on maximizing your income in retirement. That's right, free. This free book reveals little known secrets about annuity strategies in simple to understand terms that will help you make the right choices before buying an annuity. And it's free. Call right now for your free book, and as a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report. We researched over 1,200 annuities and summarized the rates and benefits of annuities from financially strong insurers. Again, that's annuity do's and don'ts for baby boomers and a free annuity rate report, both absolutely free for calling Annuity General today. Supplies are limited. Call now. Call 800-830-7360. That's 800-830-7360. Are you over the age of 50 and considering buying an annuity in the next 60 days? I have some important news for you. Don't buy an annuity until you understand the pros and cons of annuities. Call now for this free book on maximizing your income in retirement. Annuity do's and don'ts for baby boomers. From leading financial firm J.D. Melberg. That's right, free. This book reveals little-known truths about annuities in simple-to-understand terms. Grab a pen right now, because we're about to offer you this free book that unlocks the five little-known truths we believe baby boomers and seniors should know before buying an annuity, and it's free. Call 800-273-2815. As a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report. 
We researched numerous products and summarized rates and benefits of annuities, all from Silac Insurance Company. Call 800-273-2815. That's 800-273-2815. Call now. This is the book. I just said that he has uh, zero interest in listening to me talk about uh, searing pain in my hamstring, shooting in my back. Can we get a shot of him? Look at his face when I tell the stories about my back. <laughs> you got to you know, take care of whatever you did this morning. Uh, you're probably too much, too much work out there. Uh, too hard. Eventually, the back's going to back's gonna start to creep up on you, that's for sure. Um <laughs> We have uh, a couple of updates for things that are going on. Philly's never scored. Uh, they're going to the bottom of the ninth now, and Philadelphia is still 3 nothing. Guardians still up 3-1. White Sox are still losing. They can't score a run against the Royals. It's one nothing in the top of the seventh now. The Rockies have a 2 nothing lead over the Cardinals. That is in the bottom of the third. The Astros, Scotty. Now with a 5 nothing lead over the Rangers as Alex Bregman hit a home run, uh, two-run shot to make it 5 nothing. now. Did you see last night, and we're about to give you the highlight, but Woodward, in extra innings, intentionally walked, or shall I say, he had his pitcher purposely balk in the extra innings to get Bregman off of second base because he thinks Bregman's a cheater and was going to give the batter the signs. He said he admitted it after the game. He goes, I know it's not cheating, but he takes all our signs. We were up five runs, so I had the pitcher balk so that he can go to third and not get our signs. They still go after the Astros, Scotty, uh, for the sign stealing. Bregman is still the main guy that they still go after. Your boy Woodward. How, how about this? And Verlander pitched and didn't win for the first time in like two months. That is true. Verlander pitched, and he did not win. The Rangers and the Astros did go to extras. Tavares had a three-run double that cleared the bases, and they ended up winning 8-4. to four. Astros are up 5 nothing this afternoon. We will come back, Scotty, and get to a couple of other things from yesterday, including the Yankees uh, losing another one in Seattle. Uh, they had another judge homer. Wasn't enough. Just couldn't get it done in the late innings. He's got 45 now. 